In this lesson, we will discuss about some limitations of floating point arithmetics and we'll see that how we can handle these limitations. Let's see this very simple relation that point 0.1 plus point 0.1 plus point 0.1 equal equal point 0.3. This obviously is a true relation, but when we run that, you will be surprised to see that it returns false. So where is the problem? The problem is not with Python, but it is because of the fact that the numbers are stored in binary format. So let's see that in detail. Let's define a number x as 100. This 100 is in decimal number system, but in computer, it is stored as a binary value, whatever is the binary equivalent of this 100 in decimal. If we print this value of x, we see 100 on the output. So apparently we don't see that conversion into the binary number system, but in reality that 100 is stored in binary format. But when we use a print statement on X, that binary value is converted into decimal number system and is displayed on the output screen. Let's see this fraction 10 by 3 in decimal number system. And we know that we cannot represent 10 by 3 completely in floating point format. And this 3.33 is just the approximation of 10 by 3. It is not exactly 10 by 3. We can have better approximation, but still it is not exactly 10 by 3. We can have even more better approximation, but again, this is not the exact value of 10 by 3. So no matter how many 3's I write on the right side of the decimal point, that will still be an approximation of 10 by 3. We can say that it is infinitely repeating fraction. But what about this fraction 1 by 10 and I can write it as 0 0.1 and we know that this 0 0.1 is not the approximate value of 1 by 10 but it is the exact value of 1 by 10. But as I said earlier that every value is stored as binary format in computer. So if I store 0 0.1 in a variable that will be stored as a binary format. So here is a task for you, convert the 0.1 of decimal number system into binary number system. Use your knowledge of conversion from decimal number system to binary number system and you will be surprised to see that the simple number 0.1 in decimal number system when converted into binary equivalent that becomes infinitely repeating floating value. It is shown in 20 bits here. But that's not the end. You can go further beyond and this sequence will never stop. So this is a very surprising fact that the number 0.1 in the decimal number system is an infinitely repeating fraction in binary number system. And as I said that every number is stored in binary format in computer. So if we assign the value 0.1 to a variable, the binary equivalent is never exactly 0.1. Let's verify that in code. So x is 0.1 here, it will be stored in binary format and when we are printing the value of x, that binary value is converted into the decimal format and displayed on the output screen. And we see that as 0.1 on the output, so apparently there is no issue. But now let's represent the value of x till 16 digits after the decimal point. We can use the display formats as discussed in one of the lessons. So you can see it is correctly 0 0.1 followed by 15 zeros and still we don't see any problem. Now I will display that till 17 digits after the decimal point. And now we see something different. It is not exactly 0 0.1. This is because of the fact we discussed a while ago. 0 0.1 when converted into binary number system is an approximate value of 0 0.1. Because we saw that it is infinitely repeating sequence in binary number system. So when that approximate binary value is converted back to decimal number system for the print statement that is quite close to 0 0.1. But when we increase the precision, we are able to see the difference. Let's check till 25 locations after the decimal point. And you can see that it is quite close to 0 0.1, but not exactly 0 0.1. So that's why in this relation, the 0.1s are the approximate values of 0 0.1 and their sum is not equal to 0 0.3. Is 0 0.3 also stored as approximate value of 0 0.3? I do not know that right away. I will have to convert that into binary number system and then it will be clear if it is exactly represented in the binary number system or it is also an infinitely repeating sequence. So I'm sure that the reason is clear to you. But of course, next question is how we have to deal with these cases. Let's see an example where these floating point arithmetic calculations can cause a problem. 
Here I have two triangles with different sides. On the left side, the triangle sides are 3, 4 and 5. On the right side triangle, the base is 6, perpendicular is 2 and hypotenuse is 6.32, which is basically square root of 40 using Pythagoras theorem. If you find the area of these two triangles using any formula, the simplest can be half base into height and the area is 6 for both of these triangles. So let's write a code to evaluate if the area of these two triangles is same or not. So here I have area try function with the input arguments a, b and c which are the sides of the triangle and it returns the area of the triangle. In main program let's find the area of the first triangle. The three sides were 4, 3 and 5 and now let's find the area of the second triangle. For the hypotenuse instead of 6.32, let's provide its value as square root of 40 so that no approximation is done from our side. I'm checking if the area is same or not. We know the area is same but it is printed as they have different areas. So these floating point limitations can lead to wrong results. Let's see the exact values of A1 and A2. And we see there is a very little difference. Before we discuss the solution of these cases, let's see another such case and print the value of cosine of pi by 2. We know cos pi by 2 is 0, but instead of 0, we are getting a very small value of the order of 10 to raise power minus 17. Again, this is because of the limitations we have discussed in this lesson. We are using the value of pi from the math module and that is not the exact value of pi. It is very close to pi, but not exactly pi. Now let's discuss the solution. In case of trigonometric identities, instead of numeric calculations as we are doing here, we can do symbolic calculations. For that we need to import symbolic module and you can search for that if you are interested. We will not be using symbolic module in this course and maybe at some other stage we will explore that. Now coming back to this triangle problem, the solution is very simple. Instead of comparing the values for equality, we can apply a check if the values are close enough or not. And for that I can say that if the absolute value of the difference of the two variables is very low for example less than 0 0.0001 then we are saying that they have the same values and we are printing that the area of both triangles is same. So basically we have added a tolerance in our calculations that instead of exact equality check we are applying the condition on their closeness. We can also define a variable for this tolerance and then use that variable in the condition. There is also a function in math module that can check the closeness of two values. I am assigning the same values we started with. To check the closeness of two values, I can use the function isClose which is available in the math module and we have imported math module completely on line number 1 so I can use this function directly. I have to pass in two values which I want to test for the closeness and now you see that it is printed as true. And if it is 0.4 instead of 0.3, the two values are not close and we are getting a false on the output. Let's see the help of this isClose function. This is the signature of isClose function which specifies the name and the input arguments of this function. When you see this asterisk as the input argument as the help output, it means that the input arguments after this asterisk are optional input arguments. The arguments A and B are mandatory arguments so we have to pass those and the other two arguments they are optional. 
This relative tolerance specifies the tolerance till which the closeness is evaluated. Its default value is 10 to raise power minus 9. You can see the detail of two optional input arguments by yourself. So if you are not comfortable with the default value of relative tolerance, you might want to increase or decrease the tolerance. So you can do that by specifying the value of relative tolerance variable. I have reduced the tolerance here and still they are close. Usually the default value of the tolerance is reasonable and we don't need to specify that by ourselves. So here we can use that is close function. Remember this limitation is only for the floating values and not for the integers. Any integer in decimal number system when converted into binary number system is always completely represented in binary number systems. So here is the point to take home from this lesson. While working with floating values, do not use the equality operator to check the equality of two values. And similarly do not use not equal to to check the non-equality of two values. If you have to do that, you should check if they are closed or if they are not closed. I have also given a link of Python documentation which explains this floating point limitation. The link is given in the description. Thanks for watching the video.